Hey guys, Shane here, so welcome to this painting tutorial where we're going to be taking a look at painting British World War I uniforms. So this figure is a 54 or 132nd scale resin figure from Tommy's War. Link to their website in the description, they're fantastic little miniatures and well worth checking out. So first things first, we're going to start by modifying the figure's cap badge and to make it that of the Royal Munster Fusiliers which was the regiment my great-great-grandfather belonged to. So uh, this is going to be a tribute to him. So I'm going to uh, first start by very carefully removing the molded on cap badge, and then we're going to start scratch building our own. So to create the fusilier motif, which is basically a grenade very similar to that of the grenadiers, we're just going to take a small rivet from a Ming accessories pack. I'm just going to quickly uh, tack it onto the cap using a bit of CA glue. And this is going to make the grenade element of the cap badge emblem. And now to create the uh, fuse of the grenade, we're going to just take some green uh, green stuff putty, should I say? Just a two-part epoxy putty. I'm going to mix it into equal measures, and then I'm going to make the actual fuse for the grenade. And this was a little bit fiddly, but uh, I'm just going to use a small uh, scample blade here that's been dipped in water just to mold some detail into the putty while it's still wet. My sculpting skills aren't fantastic, but it's far better than just leaving a blank. And it's close enough in this scale to give a good representation of what a Fusilier's cap badge would look like. So I've already primed our model with some auto primer. In this case, just some grey rattle primer. And I'm going to add a pre-shade to the model with some German grey. And I'm going to apply this with my airbrush. You could do this with a, a rattle can if you wanted to, by just varying the angle in which you spray and I'm going to just focus this into any areas I feel shadow is going to gather I'm going to especially focus this into areas around equipment and this is also a fail save should I miss anything while I'm painting the main uniform colours there'd be no bare plastic or, or grey plastic showing through So with our pre-shade allowed to dry, now we're going to start adding the flesh tones to our figure. So this time I'm going to actually take you through each step I do, as I, I normally just do this off camera, but the lighting's good and my figure is big enough where you can see it. So we're going to start by using AK Interactive's flesh um, tone set. So if I've airbrushed down the base layer, which is like a dark sandy colour, um, sandy brown colour, and now we're going to add our light flesh. Now I've thinned this down with a little bit of water, and I'm just going to slowly start building up this light flesh colour here until I get a solid layer. Now this will take about four or five coats, and you can see that I do a small bit of the model first, and then I move on to another part of the face to let that dry for a couple of seconds, and then come back to it. So there's a lot of back and forth.
Now we're going to start adding our highlights and for this we're going to use the highlight flesh which is also included in the set. And I'm just going to focus this really onto like his chin, his cheekbones, his nose, his brow, the tops of the ears and any other kind of raised or very pronounced details on the face that I want to make pop. And once again I have very little paint on my brush, it has been tinned a little bit with water and I just do a little bit at a time. So I pick here the side of his cheek and then I blend it back. So I clear my brush and start working it back to blend it back into the darker colour. And then I move to another part of the skin. This time here's the tendons on his neck. And then I move on to another part and another part. I just slowly start working it up with very thin coats and very small amounts of paint. And the reason for this is it gives you a lot of control. If you're doing it in small parts, you can very easily correct anything you don't like. And if you don't like how a colour looks or is too bright, uh, the, the beauty of using a wet palette, which I have off camera there, you can just see the shadow of it on the top left of your screen, is that I can go back and uh, mix up a darker colour and undo any, uh, any layer I'm not happy with. But just small amounts and just gradually work it up. And just keep looking at it and see if you're happy with it. It's one of the easiest ways to go about it, really. But I'm being very careful not to lose the darker shades of flesh. I, I really only want to have a little bit of highlight here and there. Um, it's the darker sh shades that will make this model look alive. So I'm just going to be very careful not to lose that. Just add some shadow. I'm going to take some dark shadow flesh, which is also included in their set. And I'm going to paint this very deep, almost crimson like color into the eye sockets just to add some shadow to that. It will just help make the eyes pop. You could apply this to any other areas, like under the chin, under the lip. However, I kind of found the way I paint, I just prefer to use it in the deep shadows only. And in this case, I just focused to the um, the brow under the cap and his eye sockets. Now, to give this model some complexion, I'm just going to take some Vallejo Flesh Tone Wash. And I'm just going to tap this wash into the hollows of his cheeks. And that's, that's going to give him that deep kind of... Um, crimson shade that you see often with like figure painting. It's kind of a way of cheating to get around it, but it's far easier. And I'm just going to build a few coats of this up off camera just to get the consistency I want. But just don't try to do it in one layer, about two or three layers gradually build up. I'm also going to work it into his lips to give it that uh, kind of like a rosiness that I often find when you use paint is just too intense. So with our flesh tone done, uh, we're going to start working on the uniform. And for this we're going to use AK World War One's British uniform set. This is a three colour set, but we're just really going to use two colours for the most part, which is their AK uniform and their dark sand, which is the highlight colour for this. So I'm going to start using just a paintbrush from here on in, so it's all going to be brush applied from here. And as you can see, it's very thinned paint. Um, this paint is a very temperamental type of paint. I think it's very much the fellow for airbrush, really. I found that even when heavily thinned, if you work this paint too much, meaning that you keep brushing it once you applied it, even after a couple of seconds, the paint will start to clump and start to pull itself along the surface of the figure and leave horrible brush marks and other types of like marks that you don't want and clumps on the model surface. So just do small amounts at a time and move on to another part of the figure and just keep moving around. In that case, then you won't uh, find yourself making like really dirty marks that it's very easy to do with this type of paint. Off camera between coats I have a hair dryer and just give it a fairly quick blast just to dry layers so I don't accidentally create brush marks in, like unintentionally and I really recommend just buying a very cheap travel hair dryer and have it in your workshop. You know a five or six second blast of, of hot air will be enough to uh, more or less make this paint dry to the touch and then you just keep applying fresh layers on top of it and uh, this is the only, it's the only real way to go with paint like this.
This is a pretty involved step and this isn't all of it. I've cut this down quite a bit and also sped up this entire video by two. This took about two days of painting just to build this coat up. Uh, it was about maybe three or four hours just to get this uh, this base tone just to look solid enough so I could actually work with it. Um, so I'm still kind of on the fence about uh, AK paints or brush painting. I, I am a big fan of their products but sometimes I find them a little bit hit and miss when it comes to brush painting. So in order to create the colour for the gaiters, we're going to take, or should I say the uh, putties, we're going to take some German field grey from Vallejo, the AK British uniform colour, and the highlight colour from that set, which is dark sand. So you can mix Vallejo and um, AK paints together, they will mix. And I'm just going to take a little bit of water here and just start mixing them down, just to thin them. And I'm going to kind of go for kind of a really light, kind of field grey khaki colour, just to break it up a little bit. I'm happy with these layers, I'm just going to give it a blast with my hair dryer. It really does make life uh, so much easier and I would recommend really picking one of these up. Once everything is dry, we're going to start adding our shadow layer. And for this case, I like to use washes, so I'm going to use some Citadel's Agrat's Earthshade. I did consider trying to paint in the shadows um, after talking to Emi and all those. and. Uh, I still kind of haven't worked out the best way to do it yet, so I'm kind of more comfortable using washes to achieve shadow and highlighting up from that. So I'm just going to stick to what I'm good at for now until I can figure out how to do the more traditional style of uh, shadows. Using washes like this is to not allow any of the wash to pool. You cannot afford that. It'll create tide marks on the on the surface of the figure and it'll be very, very hard to undo it. So keep the brush moving, make sure it's all even. Uh, if you see any areas that are built up, just catch it with your brush and try to blend it in to other parts of the model. Just keep distributing that wash as evenly as you can. to dry we're going to start adding our highlights and we're going to go back to our AK British uniform. So the principle with using a wash what it does is it turns the, the first layer um, into a shadow layer because it changes the hue of, the, hue of the, the paint, it darkens it. So when you go back to the original layer that you put down before you put the wash on that becomes your first highlight layer. This, this is going to be very subtle, again very thin layers, I have to build this up very gradually. And it's not immediately apparent that there's even a highlight layer um, going on to this figure. Now the camera tends to make this look a little bit more reddish than it actually is. It's more on the kind of like a, a sandy kind of brown colour than uh, this reddish colour that for some reason my camera kept uh, kind of uh, doing the exposure to regardless what setting I put on it. But you can still kind of see just how subtle all these highlights will become and you have to keep it subtle with a monotone colour like this. going to focus this highlight onto the top two creases. Basically I'm really kind of paint most of the model in this colour again, 
leaving the washed areas inside creases and any area where there's a um, discernible line between say maybe the jacket and the trousers where I want to create a bit of shadow for example. And a very easy way to figure out where a highlight goes or where it doesn't go is just hold it to the light. Any area that seems that reflects light naturally on the model, that's the area you're going to put your highlight color on. Because what you're doing is you're just artificially replicating that shine or that reflection, if you like. See, this is a pretty intensive stage. It did require a lot of coats to build this up. But again, just try to be patient and don't rush yourself. These type of paints, with AK paints, if you rush yourself and put too much down, it will really burn you. So try to keep as patient as you can. And once we're happy with that, we're gonna add our second highlight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the AK uniform and the dark sand, which is the highlight color in their three color set. And I'm gonna mix them together about maybe 70% of the darker color to 30% lighter and I'll kind of use that as my base reference and I'll add or subtract light to dark um, depending on the intensity of highlight I want. So it should be kind of a kind of almost kind of a slightly beigey sandy color and I'm just going to start working on the top two creases as you can see there again it's very subtle it doesn't immediately pop you can just barely make it out and that's exactly what we want for these type of uniforms. The more subtle the better because it just allows us to add or subtract as we like. Just going to focus these colors really on the tops of creases, on the top of his epaulets, his collar, things like that. Just areas I want to draw a bit of attention to. But I really want to keep that darker color um, for the most part though. I don't want to completely undo that. Otherwise we'll change the U too much of the uniform. Put these a highlight. I'm going to take some field grey and the same dark sand from the AK set, mix them together, and we're just going to start like applying this to the center of the putties. You can really go to town highlighting and shading these if you want, but I'm just going to go for a very simple highlight just to draw a bit of attention to them. bit more of that dark sand into my wet palette just to make it a little bit lighter. I just wanted to catch a bit more light if you like. Just to make the front of the putties pop out a little bit more.
start working on the webbing and we're going to start by just make, mixing up uh, our dark sand field grey mix. This time it's just going to be a little touch of field grey into the dark sand just to give it a very slight greenish or beigey tinge. Now I did know that British soldiers tended to bal like, um, balco their, their canvas gear so it would be kind of almost like a, a slight kind of greenish hue to it. So if you wanted to make it more like they've actually like uh, added the green dye to their uniforms or to their web gear, uh, just use the, the same type tone that I did for the putties and that would be a very good place to start. However, I kind of want to break it up a little bit so I'm going to kind of give it more of a, um, a non-blancoed canvas look. The webbing actually turned out to be quite difficult in fact. There's quite a bit going on here, it's, it's quite a complex um, web gear set they have. So it did take quite a few layers just gradually building it up. So I, I did, anytime I'd inspect the model by just, you know, changing the angles in which I was viewing at it, I'd always find I missed a, a spot and to go back and paint it in. So this did take a few hours to build up. I have to say I'm absolutely just blown away by these figures, they're, they're, they're absolutely fantastic and they do reward your patience. So I'm just going to paint in the scabbard of his bayonet and I'm just going to use, that, use flat black for this.
wash it out to dry, we're going to start adding a very basic highlight to his web gear. And it's going to take down a very watered down coat of just straight dark sand. Now if this is a little bit too bright for you, you can also just add a little bit more of the British uniform into the set just to darken it down ever so slightly. I'm really just going to focus this on the tops of creases, um, the tops of the pouches, just almost, giving it, almost giving it like an edge highlight if you like. It's very watered down, so it's almost like a glaze almost. Just to make the, the webbing pop out, pop a little bit from the uniform because they have blended in ever so slightly. I'm just going to paint the head of the entrenching tool with just some uh, Filejo model colour metallic black. I think it's a very nice in scale iron look without it being too shiny but still having a metallic sheen to it. I'm also going to use this colour just to do the base uh, colour for his cap badge. Again, being very, very careful not to get any of this metallic colour on the uniform. So do tr try to keep it as neat as you can. Now to do the web gear and the, or should I say, to do the belts, the buckles, the buttons, what have you, we're going to just use some bright bronze from Filejo model color, or should I say game color. As the uh, fittings were actually all brass, so it does allow us to add a little splash of color and interest into our figure. Again, being very careful not to get this color on any other parts of the uniform. See them, sorry that I'm holding this off camera, but I'm being very careful because I don't if I get this on a if you get metallic paint on any other parts of the model, it will always leave a shiny residue regardless if you wipe it away or not. So I'm being very careful not for that to happen. But you can see that the, the bright bronze really does add a lot of interest to our model. And with that, our uniform is fully painted. Now I just painted his rank markings off camera, and other than that. That is our model. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. I really, really did enjoy working on a 54mm model. It was absolutely fantastic. And uh, it was a very kind of personal project for me. And I was very happy that I was able to take you guys along. Thanks very much, guys. I hope you found this tutorial um, helpful. I all hope you have a great Christmas. And I'll catch you on the new year.